So if I were trying to lose weight right now, what would I do? I want to help you to get unstuck and out of your way. If I were going to start my weight loss journey all over, right? I'm 51. I've lost the weight. Um, you know, I've lost the same 10 pounds 20 times. I mean, you know, people are always fascinated with, Sherry, how much weight did you lose? First of all, I don't even know. Secondly, all told, well over 100. I mean, it was just stupid how much. Anyhow, if I were going to start right now on my weight loss journey, what would I do? The first thing I would do is I would prioritize a relationship with God. And I know you might be thinking that doesn't have anything um, to do with weight loss. It has everything to do with it. Because the majority of your problem right now in your inability to lose weight is how you think and the things that you run to, right? You have a bad day, you run to wine. You have a bad day, you drive through and get tacos. Or, you know, you're tempted, you go and you, you eat the food that you didn't want to and then you beat yourself up. It's all what's going on here. So that's what I did. I stopped seeking the gym and I started seeking him, right? I stopped seeking a number on the scale and I started seeking number one. If I were gonna do it all over again, I would do exactly that all over again. I would start where God had me starting. And that was, I got up early to go and spend time in the Word so that I could learn the Word, so that I could build, I could learn His Word. I could build a relationship with Him. I didn't know I was doing all this when I did it. And I stopped working out. And then I just started practicing applying the Word of God to my life. He, you know, the Bible teaches about temptation. What do you do? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There isn't any temptation that you can't overcome if you'll just go to God and he will show you a way out so that you can endure. That's exactly what I did. I started just creating a plan. Okay, if this is the meal plan that I want to stick to, I need to just stick to it. I need to see that I need to, I'm not going to lose weight unless I keep doing right things. And I just started stacking victory after victory day after day. All I did was make a plan. This is cherry. This is what you're going to have for breakfast. This is what you're going to have for lunch. This is what you're going to have for dinner. These are your snacks. I did it imperfectly. Um, I was following Whole30 initially and Whole30 was really strict at the time. When I started it, you know, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, there weren't brands like Primal Kitchen and things that I could go and buy you know, all of these compliant ketchups and ranch and mayo and all of those things. And I would just do a sloppy version. I would do what I could where I was with what I had. So if I had to do it all over again, I would prioritize God. I would make a schedule, have a plan, do a weekly menu. I would do batch cooking. I would do pocket prepping, cook what I can, when I can. I would make things simple. I would stop thinking it has to be perfect. I would stop thinking I have to have all these gourmet meals. You don't. You can just get a cookie sheet out and you can put vegetables and some chicken on there and some olive oil and salt and pepper. Stick those in the oven and those can be your dinners for the night. You can go buy bagged salad and rotisserie chicken and that can become your lunches for the week. Um, you can identify the snacks. For me, it was Lara bars and RX bars. Those were the snacks I had. When I felt like eating popcorn and I knew popcorn was going to keep me from losing weight, I would chop up a head of lettuce and I would salt it. And if we sat down and watched a movie, that's what I would eat. I swapped out my wine. I slowly started phasing out the wrong things and started stepping toward the right things. I hated it. It was horrible. The family would have pizza and I would make little zucchinis on a plate with pizza sauce and mozzarella cheese and pepperoni. And I didn't feel like I was missing out. And slowly as I did this, I was able to do what God's word says, which is walk in the spirit, yield to his, to the still small voice, um, walk in my spirit of power and self-discipline. The more I applied what I was learning about in the word of God to my life, the more I was able to see weight loss happen. And it began happening. The other things I would do is I would prioritize bedtime. I would absolutely be disciplined with my bedtime. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, I'll get enough sleep. No, you're waking up every day and you're exhausted. And when you're fatigued, you're going to be weak around temptation. Another thing is prioritizing water. Learn how much water you need to drink and drink it. 
Don't even coddle yourself and let yourself believe the lie that you don't like water. Guess what? If you didn't have water and you didn't have access to clean water, you would love water. The fact, the, the problem is, is you probably want pop. You probably want chocolate milk or you want whatever the other thing is. Water. Do you want to lose weight? What's your goal, right? If your goal is weight loss, these are the things that you need to do. Your body is not going to release the weight without your hormones being realigned. The way that you align your hormones is stop being dehydrated, drink enough water, stop being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you need enough sleep, right? You, if without enough sleep, your body isn't going to handle stress well. You've got to eat the right foods and you'll get there. The other thing is I would understand that weight loss is going to take a long time. Something nobody ever told me. Weight loss is going to take a long time. You might want it to take 30 days, 90 days, like everybody tells you, but it's not going to. It's not going to take you 30 days or 90 days. How long did it take you to get here? Because very likely it's at least that or at least half of that to get the weight off of you. And it has more to do with your mind and the renewing of your mind and you understanding how to have right thinking so you can have right doing than it has really to do with the physiology of your body. Your body will lose weight if you will just stop putting the wrong foods in your mouth. If you would start going to bed. Here's another thing I would do as a Christian. I would stop being a casual Christian. I would wholeheartedly chase after God. I would believe that Jesus is the life, the truth, and the way, even in weight loss. Right? There isn't anything he won't help you with. And walking on the narrow path, that's the way to lose the weight. He's going to give you the spiritual strength. Don't think that you can do it on your own. But I would, I would scrub my life. If there's something I'm watching, words that I'm using, people that I'm hanging around with, um, shows that I'm watching, books that I'm reading, that I wouldn't watch or read or speak, if Jesus were sitting right next to me, it's got to go. It just is. It has to, it just does. You, it has to go. You can't get to where you're going if you allow your flesh to master you. You're not going to get to where you're going. When you were born again, your eternal life began in that moment. So you need to start living like that now. And while you're on earth living in this eternal life that's already begun in the physical you need spiritual strength to accomplish what you can't accomplish on your own physically. So when you're weak, he is strong. But he's not going to give you his strength if you don't go to him and ask for it. And you have to recognize your need of God. You have to identify your weakness. If I were going to start now to lose weight, I would have no more excuses. I used to have so many reasons why I couldn't lose weight. And they were all just excuses. It was all just how I liked to coddle myself. Um... And know what they are. Get real with yourself. Look in the spiritual mirror. Where am I lying to myself? Where am I not doing what I know I should do? Where am I doing what I know I shouldn't do? Because that's James 4, 17. That's the very definition of personal sin. So identify those things. You know, where are you coddling yourself? I like to say it's like a metaphorical binky. We like our, our, our excuses. They coddle us. They comfort us. They give us what we want, not what we need. So if I were going to start over, I would prioritize God. I would pick a meal plan and stick to it. Any meal plan is going to work. You just have to know how to stick to it. That's the problem. That's why I have the coaching programs that I have. I remember when I couldn't lose weight, I was defeated. I was in my bedroom closet, folding baby clothes looking forward to my glass of wine because every night I drank my problems away and most of my problems had to do with the fact that I was sad that I was 39 years old just had my third baby I was working in corporate America I had to wear a suit every day and I was wearing maternity pants after I you know it had been a long time since I'd had a baby and I was sick of it and I didn't feel like myself I lost myself I lost my self-confidence my I lost everything my joy I lived for the pleasure of food, lust of the flesh, right? I didn't, I wasn't willing to give up alcohol. I, that's the other thing. If I were going to lose weight, 
and nothing mattered as much to me as losing weight because I wanted that self-confidence back. I wanted my joy back. I wanted me back. I would drop the alcohol and run far from it and start drinking water. I would I would prioritize eating the right foods. I would stop babying myself by allowing myself to get into the situation where I don't have the right foods on hand, right? Because that's something that happens. Oh, we didn't have any food in the house and so I ate blah, blah, blah. No, you always know you're gonna need to eat. If you're a parent, you remember anticipating your child's hunger needs. You always took a diaper bag. You never with, were without milk, right? You were never without diapers. You anticipated their needs. You can anticipate your needs. You just don't want to. This is how we look forward to coddling ourselves. Or we look forward to going to the event without bringing a compliant dish for ourselves because we look forward to the food pusher, right? You've got to get real with yourself if you want to lose the weight. What is most important? You've got to stop trading what you want now for what you want later. And that's going to mean sacrifice. And as a believer, you're going to have to get really real with yourself and understand what on a daily basis in my flesh do I need to crucify and expect it to hurt. What on a daily basis do I need to cast out? You're going to need to realize that spiritual warfare is happening on your weight loss journey. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's looking to, he's sneaking around looking for who he can devour, and he loves to attack you when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're lonely, emotional, when you're tired, when you're tempted. Those are all of his tricks. He's not really coming up with anything new. You just keep falling to the same things. So pay attention to your weaknesses. Identify your obstacles. Start planning into them. Start expecting that you're going to need to be the woman that takes food with her places. Eat before you go. You can say no to alcohol. And if you struggle with any of these things, that's what God has me doing. He has me teaching women how to think like the woman they want to become. Because that really is all that's wrong. When I look back on my weight loss journey, I really didn't have a weight loss problem. I had a thinking problem. I had a believing and behaving problem. I couldn't become who I so desperately wanted to, to become. The version of me that I wanted to be. I couldn't become her because I couldn't think like her. And then when I started thinking like her, I started believing. And little by little, I started becoming. And little by little, the weight fell off. And little by little is the way. It's the godly way. It's the narrow path. You're not gonna get to your weight loss promised land by doing all of these get skinny quick diets. Don't make it about a diet. Understand the foods that you need to eat if you wanna lose weight. And then once you lose the weight, you're gonna be at a point of metabolic flexibility where you're able to say, okay, you know, 80, 90% of the time I eat on the narrow path. This is, these are the foods that I eat. But when I go out, I allow myself to have these foods. You don't go so broad off the path. You only broaden it, right? For example, um, well, I'm just gonna give you an example because this is just me talking while I'm driving. Right now, I am a carnivore. Um, well, I actually follow the lion diet. If I were going to, which I'm not, um, if I were going to eat off of the narrow plan, narrow path, and I was going to widen the path a little bit and go and have something, I would just go keto. I would make a keto dessert. I would have, you know, some kind of keto treat, and then I would be able to bring it back in. And it would feel like an indulgence. Trust me, when you start eating the right things and your mental clarity comes back and your hormones start realigning, everything changes. Suddenly you lose the desire for all of the things that used to give you pleasure in your flesh. You suddenly just don't lose it because now you love hearing God's voice. You love spiritual discernment. You love how you feel eating cleanly. You love how you feel waking up every morning and you're not hungover. You love waking up early and spending time with the God and filling, spending time with God and filling your cup first. You love being spirit led. You get to a point, which is where I am now. I want this for you. Nothing tastes as good as hearing his voice, right? So if I were going to lose weight, these are just some of the things that I would start doing now. 
They're the things that changed me. There was so much between here and there, or between where I am now and where I started. But the key is starting, and then recognizing that you have within you everything you need to do what you should. You just might need to be shown how to do it.